This is Marco, and uh, I will just give an introduction and a brief overview of our Consensus Lab team week. Uh, later on in this video, team members, Consensus Lab team members will give you a detailed updates. So we met uh, from 5th to 9th September in Istanbul, uh, in a nice hotel, nice uh, nice view. Maybe the, the conditions were not ideal, uh, but uh, anyway, we had a good time. So... Consensus Lab grew considerably, first of all. So 17 people attended team week. So this makes so uh, by now 13 team members and two members were remote. And we were joined by Ali from Falcon Ecosystem team and Dragon from the FVM team. And so we had 15 people on site plus uh, two Consensus Lab team members were joining remotely. Uh, I would say this time there was a lot of uncertainty among team members prior to team week. So there were discussions around what is the purpose of hierarchical consensus, which we renamed uh, later on to uh, interplanetary consensus or IPC. Like what will be team focus, uh, what are the future projects and so on. So so, so apparently uh, some team members felt a bit uh, lost, which so we are at the critical part, part like stage of, of what Consensus Lab is doing. So we are trying to uh, basically productize a year of work. So maybe this is like uh, with certain dependencies and maybe this is a tricky point. But uh, one basically summary is that uh, one line summary is that we largely removed uh, these concerns. So we brought all team members on, on, on the same page and uh, basically discussed uh, issues in details and uh, came to basically conclusions which allow us to uh, work for at least a quarter without uh, basically ambiguity and uncertainty. So one pending dependency uh, at that time, because I'm recording this a bit late, so I will give you an additional update on, on what happened uh, regarding this was on BuilderNet. So BuilderNet is the uh, testnet essentially on which we plan to uh so incentivize testnet on which we plan to test uh, uh what we are developing in consensus lab so near consensus protocol and interplanetary consensus or hierarchical consensus uh subnets and communication among subnets and that pending dependency was supposed to be removed uh, the week after team week and uh, basically it was so builder net is happening i will cover that in the next slide so what we did in the uh, in Istanbul, so basically you will hear about project updates, not necessarily in this order where I put them. We are going to start, uh, so not necessarily in this order, but basically Y3, uh, which covers the efficient consensus protocol for subnets, Y4, which improves the Filecoin mainnet consensus, B3, which has to do with uh, post POC development of uh, hierarchical consensus of interplanetary consensus towards production and G1 which explores the uh, this is the project that explores uh, concurrent execution uh, on FVM many people so so the first face to face with so many team members and we had a lot of opportunity for so so lot, lots of breaks among sessions which were very productive so you could uh, you could see team members like basically having water cooler talks. So, so like even during the breaks, things were discussed and uh, I'm really happy with how this went and uh, basically how it went from the team building side and how it went from the from the work side. So basically from, from the execution side. There was a lot of new ideas and brainstorming, especially about what we are going to do in 2023. I'm going to briefly cover this. Essentially, there is, uh, if you go to our CTRAP, uh, you will see also the, the links towards detail notes so you can see what this was about. Uh, but key outcomes, so basically we discussed imminent impact of the consensus lab team on Falcoin expected consensus because we have pending improvements on, on Falcoin expected consensus as well as the security analysis. So the first, uh, I would say detailed security analysis of expected consensus. So these are the products of the Y4 project and we spend a lot of time on that. So we'll hear updates on that uh, later on. Then we also discussed the uh, details, uh, detail plan for what follows for IPC. So IPC is interplanetary consensus. This was hierarchical consensus before. And we confirmed short-term focus on BuilderNet. So this is this uh, testnet that I described, right? So which we want to launch uh, with the FVM team and the Lotus team by roughly speaking by November uh, this year, in any case uh, this year. Certain decisions are 
were supposed to be taken after after the team week, and they and they were. I will give you a short update on this later on, and then we spend a, uh, some time on uh, discussion about what we are going to do in 2023. So rather than uh, what came up is the basically top down approach where we take a, a use case, basically a social network or yeah content dissemination in certain sense use case. And then after discussing uh, basically email, Twitter, and other examples, uh, we converge to perhaps look at the D only fence, which stands for decentralized only fence, which would allow us to basically go through our stack, through what Filecoin already has, through what Consensus Lab is developing, uh, and basically try to understand if we can build such a content dissemination platform. And, uh, but this, like, uh, I guess in the next uh, overview of the next uh, team week, you will hear more details about this because this is really for 2023 and it doesn't concern us. It doesn't change our plans for 2022 and at least Q1 2023, I would say. So, BuilderNet was the main focus. And here I will be giving you like a short summary of it. So, we remain committed as consensus lab we remain committed to work together with the FEM team uh, on buildernet and akos from the consensus lab team is moving temporarily to the FEM team directly to help them deliver critical pre-buildernet milestones such as helping them with the uh, evm on FEM and later on 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 another project uh, basically related to uh, gas metering on FEM. so what we are postponing is basically what we want to do post building it is focus on rust based uh, ipc core so we want to move from the current uh, uh i would say file coin lotus centric approach that we had so while for buildernet we are still figuring out with the lotus team what we're going to do shall we uh merge change uh, ipc related changes to lotus or shall we go for this with the strip cubicle client uh, for buildernet that's that's uh uh, basically the topic of the design sessions that are going to take place shortly after the team week. Basically for BuilderNet, this would be still uh, the code that we developed for, for Udico and Lotus. And then later on, we are going to uh, change our focus as a group to Rust. Uh, these are the decisions uh, that we took uh, during the team week. So the plan here was to add Mir to the BuilderNet as soon as ready. But since uh, basically I'm recording this a bit later, I can tell you that uh since the building that is at least in the beginning is going to uh, be based on a proof of authority or as uh, some uh, listeners or, or viewers might, might know this consensus protocol is classical bft consensus protocol uh we are going to run buildernet immediately on here and uh, so basically this buildernet allows uh, consensus lab to deploy to its two key sub projects that we have been working on for the last year or so uh which are basically ipc functionality and uh, near efficient consensus protocol uh thank you very much and in the rest of this video you will hear about uh, detailed project updates thank you very much hi everyone uh, i want to talk about uh, the g1 project where we look at um, scalable execution of transactions and so uh, as an update, uh, Vivian and I have been working on benchmarking different uh, concurrency control protocols. And we've decided to do that on top of the reference Falcon virtual machine for two reasons. Uh, first of all, we hope that it will give us uh, an idea on how easy or how hard it is to use the existing architecture for concurrent execution. And second of all, uh, we think that this will give us um, the most accurate results um, in the benchmark that we'll, that we will do. And so on the road uh, to this goal, we've uh, started by implementing uh, naive parallel execution of transactions. So what I mean by that is, so currently you have uh, a single machine that executes one transaction after the other. We've now um, made it such that there are multiple machines are spawned and that each in parallel uh, can execute transaction transactions. Of course, in general, uh, this does not lead um, to a de deterministic uh, state. That's why we need concurrency control um, uh, it, that has to be in place. So the next step towards this goal then 
is uh, to capture the memory of writes and reads, which will then allow us to understand the dependencies uh, between transactions. Uh, we've done that uh, by adding a wrapper around uh, the kernel, and this wrapper can intercept uh, the system calls from within uh, the WASM container, and this allows us to track the, the memory accesses. What is next for us? Um, we plan on implementing two different approaches to then uh, to compare them between each other. The first um, uses pre-execution. Uh, so it executes the transactions a first time just to understand the dependencies between each other. And it leverages then this information to create a so-called fork join schedule, uh, which is some uh, data structure that can be added, added to a block and used by the other nodes in the network to speed up, uh, considerably speed up, hopefully, uh, the execution of, of transactions. The second approach we are thinking on, uh, to look at is called block STM. Uh, and here there's no pre-execution step. And instead, the um, execution is done optimistically and leverages uh, the order of a block, the order of transactions inside uh, a block that we already have. Right. Um, we also discussed uh, the workloads that we will use to provide these benchmarks. Um, as, and we want them to be as realistic as possible to also have meaningful results, right? So it was then suggested to us that we could look at the, the Ethereum virtual machine and try to understand which transaction types uh, exist and what are the proportions are in, in, in the current use and uh, use that to inspire us uh, to get a realistic uh, FVM workload. Concretely, we will then use or reuse the message vectors that are currently um, implemented for FVM testing. And I think this will be a convenient way of, uh, of achieving uh, the, 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 these benchmarks. Yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I will give you the updates for Project P3 and all of the outcomes after the discussions of our CL Lab Week in Istanbul. So for those of you that are not aware, Project P3, in Project P3, what we are trying is to move hierarchical consensus into production. And the first thing that, that we agreed on in this lab week is to rename completely. As we're moving HC into production, we're going to rename the protocol name. And from hierarchical consensus, or HC, we are going to move into the interplanetary consensus, IPC. So from now on, uh, probably you'll, I mean, it may slip a bit and we may still uh, refer sometimes as HC, but we've changed the name of the project and from now on we're gonna refer to hierarchical consensus as interplanetary consensus or IPC. So in throughout this quarter, uh, what we've been doing in HC or IPC in order to move it into production is first, like you know that there was an MVP for, for hierarchical consensus as part of Eudico. And uh, in this MVP, we were using the legacy VM. But as we are moving uh, Filecoin into the FVM, the first thing that we did this quarter is to start moving from the legacy, all of the actors and all of the, all of the processes that we have in HC, we started moving them from from the legacy VM to target the FVM. So we rewrote all of the HC or IPC actors to FVM. We also wrote uh, a spec so that we could start uh, kicking off discussions with the community and giving a bit more of like uh, a low level detail of how the protocol works. And we wrote a feed draft for discussion in the feed discussions uh, repo so that others could start interacting because before it was just CL or consensus lab, the ones that uh, were involved in the design and the implementation of the protocol. And we wanted, as we move into production, we wanted others to give their feedback and their insight about what we're, we were doing. In parallel, uh, as the team has grown, we are also improving the protocol design. So Guy is uh, uh, theoretically uh, modeling the protocol and understanding how we can improve it and like its security, its performance uh, from a the theoretical point of view. Uh, we kicked off our Rust implementation of uh, IPC. And instead of using, because in our current MVP, what we are using as a high performance, or what we are starting to integrate as our high performance um, consensus for subnets is mirror, and you'll see a bit more, uh, a few updates of, of the Project Y3 that is the one that is uh, working on mirror. But like for the Rust implementation, we wanted to use one of 
of a high performance uh, consensus that it's out there, which is uh, NARVAL. I'll give you also a, a brief update uh, about that and all of the work that Akash has been doing um, with the Rust implementation of IPC and integration of NARVAL. Uh, also, uh, Wills joined the team recently and he's been working on tracing Eudico and, and monitoring um, IPC because like once we move, as we're moving into production, we want to uh, deploy uh, the protocol into a testnet and we want to have tools in order to see what is happening, how people use the protocol, like it, have benchmarks on uh, the delay of cross net messages and so on. So uh, we've been doing a lot of work on trying to trace the MVP so that we can start getting some numbers of the protocol. And then there's been a lot of discussions and design ideas. So we've tried to, like initially we were really focused on the MVP. Now that we have the MVP, we've been writing specs, like onboarding people into the protocol and trying to discuss openly like the design decisions, see if we've made some mistakes, some blind spots and so on before we um, we move into a production ready uh, implementation of, of IPC. So one of the things that uh, we've been discussing and like that guy presented in Istanbul is a proposal to simplify the IPC protocol. Because before like we, there, we had like this complex architecture with subnets, crossnet messages and so on. And the first thing that he realized while well, he was uh, theoretically analyzing the, the protocol is that maybe we could have a simpler protocol that is easier to to analyze and that supports all of the features that we had so far. So uh, instead of having an overlay of or an overlay of subnets, the new architecture is just an account uh, hierarchy throughout the whole uh, system. So we restrict the crossnet messages to parent-child accounts. So instead of having these complex crossnet messages where that are hard to reason and like the the reward model is not clear, um, guys' proposal is to have a hierarchy of accounts and like the only way to exchange um, uh, value between or interact from a subnet to with the rest of the hierarchy is through uh, a combination of parent-child uh, interactions. So this really simplifies the model of the reward model, the fee model, and a lot of, a lot of other um, models in the system. And the overall overview of this proposal is that we move from a motorcycle plane submarine, how um, as Guy wants to refer to our previous design of, of IPC, to just a motorcycle. So to have a simple model that allows us to do all of the features that we were doing, but having a clear uh, core. Uh, in the end, we realized, like after all of the, uh, after Guy presented his proposal, we realized that the, the number of things that needed to change in the implementation may not be that much. So we are focusing on trying, like as Guy keeps uh, exploring and updating the spec uh, towards this new, this new architecture, we will try to implement the changes so that we can uh, have this simpler model um, in our first version of the protocol. Then um, another parallel stream that we had in IPC is the, the implementation of, of IPC in Rust using Forest, uh, the Forest Lotus client as a base and integrating um, the Mist and Labs implementation of Narval, which is a high performance um, a high performance protocol used in the SUI blockchain. Um, and one of the things that we realized as we were doing this work, we knew that this was happening uh, while integrating Mir into Lotus. We knew that there were certain uh, like barriers and limitations in order to integrate this kind of protocol that has its own mempool operation and like its own execution model into the current architecture of Falcon. And uh, as we were doing the same with um, Narval, we realized that maybe we need to change certain parts of the architecture in order to accommodate this kind of, of BFT-like or high-performance um, consensus protocol into the base codes. Some of the problems that we saw as, integrate, as we were integrating um, Narval in the, into Forest is that there's a mismatch between Falcon block and the execution model because these BFT-like protocols, they don't have a concept of time or epoch. There are rounds, but uh, they're kind of unpredictable, so it's not as easy as in a longest chain protocol. Um, then there's the problem of gas limits, because we, as in longest chain protocols, we have a gas limit for blocks. This is not exactly the same for BFT-like protocols like Mir mm -hmm. or Nerval. And uh, we came up with a set of, of potential um, 
workarounds for this. But the problem with this is that this may affect performance. So we would be doing a lot of glue code that may be affecting performance. And after this, we realized that maybe instead of using um, the current architecture for longest stream protocols that we have in Forest and in, in Eudico or Lotus, we need to figure out a way of coming up with an IPC reference client that is ready for any kind of consensus. Um, protocol as we build IPC. So to have a reference client or a core client that is able to support any kind of consensus algorithm. So in the same code base, we have a way of uh, implementing any consensus algorithm. And uh, we, as part of this work, we started exploring what was the best way of like, in order to reach high performance and accommodate any kind of consensus algorithm in IPC, what was the best way to get there. So we evaluated um, what would it take to just strip Eudico from all of the five one specific things and come up with an architecture able to accommodate any, any consensus algorithm. We, sorry. <laughs> We evaluated, instead of using Eudico, what would it take to use uh, Forest as a base for a reference plan for IPC. We even checked uh, other projects in the ecosystem like Substrate, if we could have an IPLD-based blockchain that targeted the, the FVM and have this reference client, but based in Substrate. Or what would it take to have a new model or blockchain from the existing models that we have? So to take Eudico or Forest, take the the sinker, abstract the sinker with an interface so that we can have different ones according to consensus algorithm, take the mempool, the current mempool that we have implemented and abstract it so that we can have um, different ways, like different implementations according to consensus algorithm. And so far, this has been the the what we may be tackling in the in the midterm, which is trying to extract all of the models from existing models from the either forest or Eudico base code so that we come up with abstractions to build a modular blockchain that allows to implement any consensus for, for IPC. So what are the short-term uh, next steps for IPC? First, um, we want to try to deploy as the FVM team is uh, building their builder net for, uh, to test the, the, the EVM and the nat native factors like the new update for the FVM, we want to try to have uh, to share this testnet so that we can start merging some of our code uh, from Eudico to their experimental FVM M2 branch so that we can also test in this testnet the, all of the code and the MVP that we've done of FHC so far. In this process, what we want to do is to uh, check our code and like move it from an MVP code to a more production ready code so that we have it there and it can be. Um, uh, and we make it more uh, resilient, and we want to integrate Mir as um, finalize the Mir integration into Eudico so that it can be used as part of the testnet, either in the rootnet or as subnet. So to give in the build net the ability not only to test a VM uh, user defined actors, but also to be able to deploy new new subnets. And for this, we need to reach a feature parity between the FVM and the legacy VM actors of of IPC. This is our, like this builder net is going to be our main focus, but like as we um, move towards this builder net in parallel, if there's spare time, we want to explore this implementation of the of IPC as a product. So to have this core um, client of IPC that can be used for to to implement any root net or or any subnet with the architectural abstractions that I I. I mentioned, and we want to start onboarding new use cases to IPCs because we think like the most straightforward ones that we've been discussing a lot is the use of like onboarding Saturn, the Saturn team, and like with their layer twos and the, the layer threes and this architecture, their geographical ar architecture into uh, IPC subnets. And we also want to, to test like how could we implement uh, Lambda scheduling and Lambda execution of, of Lambda jobs into IPC. So this is briefly all that we've discussed uh, around IPC and like the short term uh, future of the protocol. If there are any questions, please let us know. I'm more than happy to keep discussing. Thank you very much. Hello, this is Matej and I'll be talking about modeling state machine replication systems and blockchain systems. First, uh, let me say a few words about the context of uh, this problem. So currently there's a big diversity in uh, agreement protocols and this is not likely to 
decrease. It will probably even increase even more. Uh, there's many kinds, many families of uh, agreement protocols, BFT style, long chain style, synchronous, asynchronous, uh, and so on. And uh, they are working in very different ways. Now, uh, currently what's happening most of the time is that when somebody designs a blockchain system or a state machine replication system in general, uh, they take some particular consensus protocol and center all the all the design of the other uh, parts of the system around the consensus protocol. Now, this might work for very particular uh, concrete use cases, but um, I think there are some problems with this approach. It gets pretty complicated in general. There's many modules, uh, many components of a full-fledged SMR or blockchain system, including execution, uh, uh, transaction availability, the reception, their uh, res the responses to the client. Somebody needs to handle the state. The state needs to be garbage collected. Maybe there needs to be some execution engine and all and, and so on. The checkpoints need to be made, and there are many many interactions between those components of such a system. And uh, very often it turns out in the end to be a big mess, in the implementation especially. What can be said in general is that we are often lacking modularity and universality uh, in, in, the approach of, uh, the, in the approach to blockchain and SMR implementations. The implementations and, um, tend to be ad hoc with few reusable components and uh, very often it ends up being one big uh, monolithic system that is hard to maintain and hard to upgrade and uh, keep up with the progressing with the progress of research on uh, on these systems and protocols what is also a very important point that is maybe in my opinion a bit underestimated sometimes is that uh, different people have different mental models of how the state machine replication system works uh, everybody thinks slightly differently about what basic components uh, such a system consists of, uh, what uh, their roles are, how they interact with each other, and so on. And uh, this sometimes makes discussions about such systems complicated. Uh, from from own experience, I uh, I can say that very, that sometimes it happens that most of the time of the discussion actually goes to getting everybody on the same page what we're actually talking about and uh, what what we mean by the by the terminology we use so this is not optimal and uh, what I propose is the is the following approach I would like to uh, devise a clear and useful set of abstractions around the components of a blockchain or SMR system uh, I think it is. It could be in a way similar, not in all aspects, but in but in some way similar to the OSI model for networking. But this would be for blockchain and SMR systems. Uh, in a nutshell, basically, it would be just a certain set of abstractions that everybody could refer to when discussing and implementing um, blockchain systems. That would make the understanding of it easier which in turn would also make implementation easier. So what we could do next is to progressively uh, try to define such a model for uh, SMR and blockchain systems, and uh, even start by mapping proposed protocols and designs of systems to that, module, to that uh, model, especially the Y3 scalable consensus project or, or the interplanetary consensus project. That could be a way to start. Uh, we could keep updating the model as necessary when we when we encounter something that doesn't really fit, and when uh, the whole thing stabilizes, we could even write a, write a paper about it next year, maybe, and try to publish it somewhere. And uh, I have the latest update on the scalable consensus project, uh, also called Y three. So what do we have so far? We have the mere Unicode integration of uh, the consensus module. That means that a mere based subnet can be now instantiated and run in Udico uh, just by booting up Udico with the correct parameters. Uh, this uh, is thanks to Dennis who implemented the integration. 
What we also have is a reconfiguration. That means that node can, nodes can now dynamically join the system and be added to the system while the system is running. We have plenty of technical advancements. So uh, to mention the most important and interesting ones, we have a simple independent availability layer uh, that is currently being extended to a Narval implementation. Andre was taking care of this. So what this basically means is that uh, we have a separate module that uh, is concerned with availability of transactions and is independent from the ordering, which is done by a separate module and uh, only cares about the order of the transactions that are delivered. Uh, we have a uh, easy pseudocode like way of writing protocols as mere modules is also thanks to Andre. Uh, we have lippy to be based communication. Dennis was uh, the person implementing this part. And uh, the next two points are thanks to Sergey. And these points are a simple benchmarking tool that uh, we haven't used yet to obtain some numbers, but we're working on it right now. And uh, Sergey also wrote a simulated time testing engine, which basically means that uh, we can speed up tests without having to wait for actual real-time timeouts that uh, sometimes need to occur in the system. One more thing that is important that we have is a more clear view of the architecture of the whole system, which is described in the public design document. Okay, so what do we not yet have? Or when, what are the next steps that, that we need to take with this project? Uh, so what we need is now a more robust and better tested version of all I, I mentioned just before. In particular, this means uh, the system needs to be able to recover from crashes. Uh, it needs to support uh, weighted voting to be, to be amenable to to proof of stake and uh, proof of uh, space time and other kinds of uh, protocols and uh, membership management. We absolutely need to improve on the documentation of, uh, of the system, which is currently lacking behind a lot. And uh, we also want to make the system robust, robust against malicious attacks, uh, or at least uh, the more obvious ones, such that a uh, malicious attacker cannot just come and destroy the system. One big thing we want to do is to deploy our system on the Buildernet testnet as a subnet. And uh, this is our next milestone. For more details, uh, you can look at the roadmap, the roadmap document that is public, that is being uh, modified right now. And it will contain all the small, lower level details and uh, approximate timelines when, like about this, process. Hi everyone, uh, this is Sarah giving an update on our project Y4 about Filecoin mainnet consensus. So first some good news, um, thanks to the amazing work of our uh, intern Shui Shao, we have a formal security proof for EC that we want to um, submit to Financial Crypto uh, 23. Um, also, um, with our work, we proposed some um, uh, security improvements to EC. And uh, during our team week, we decided uh, that we will go ahead with one of our suggestions, which was to uh, replace uh, the broadcasts in EC, so the blog broadcast, with consistent broadcasts. And consistent broadcasts will allow to uh, prevent equivocation from an adversary. So this will greatly strengthen the security of EC. Now, we also made some uh, longer term plan that are more uh, research oriented. We want to investigate a new consensus protocol for Ficoin, which is an adaptation of uh, Bobtail. Bobtail is a protocol that was presented in the context of proof of work. Um, Guy made a proposal to, to adapt a Bob, Bob tail to the proof of storage case. So our plan for our plan for the next couple of months is to first finalize the details of the protocol, make some design choice. Um, and at the same time, uh, see if we can work out a formal proof, um, see what security guarantees this protocol can get. So very exciting work coming ahead. Thank you.